Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Hum, and I'd like to welcome you to a, a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, in this conversation, this is part two of Kundalini and Your Health. And uh, we'll be pursuing that in a, just a moment. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce my co-host, uh, Amelia Centaur. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chris, and hello, everybody. Good to be here. Um, I would like to thank you, Amelia, and, and your husband, and your lovely children, and your dog and your cat, and everybody there in the Kingdom of Kerry in Ireland for allowing this program to go forward. So many thanks to you, Amelia. You're very welcome indeed, Chris, and everyone. And I would like to also thank Eileen Loro and and Barbara Perry and all of the people who have who have given their time and their expertise into into bringing this Kundalini information into the public domain. I would like to thank Glenn Ola for divi- or designing and maintaining the site called Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com, and I encourage everyone to take a visit to that website. I would also encourage people to go to to uh, Kundalini Matters at Gmail dot com and Kundalini Living, uh, Eileen Loro's uh, website. I would encourage you to visit uh, any of the following groups: the Kundalini Awakening Systems One on Yahoo Groups dot com or the same name on Facebook Groups. And there's also a Kundalini Healing. Uh, both on Yahoo and Facebook, and and there's a uh, my page is Kristen Kundalini on Facebook, and you're welcome to to go there and read that information there. So I'd like to welcome all of you to this uh, this this uh, program on Kundalini and health. Uh, I believe uh, Centara may want to make an announcement. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, let you go with that, uh, Santara. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. Um, I would like to take this opportunity um, to let you know that if you want to support Chris um, with the work that he does, he is a very unique teacher. He works 24-7 supporting te- people um, in their Kundalini Awakening process. And if you would like to support him, then you can go to a link and um, you can make a donation there. The link is, I will give it to you now, is it www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And um, thank you very much. All donations um, are received with love and gratitude. That's wwwascension hyphen Kundalini dot blogspot dot com, and thank you, Chris. Thank you, thank you, Amelia, for making that, that announcement. Uh, so right now, I'm, I'm uh, broadcasting from Barstow, California. So if there are any listeners in Barstow, hello to you. Um, I will be traveling for the next uh, uh, 13 days uh, across the uh, United States uh, from California to Florida. So. I just want to welcome anybody that may be uh, on that way, and and, uh, and uh, salutations to all of you who are exploring or and experiencing the Kundalini. In this program, it's Kundalini and Health. Uh, last time I covered, I think, pretty much the the physical aspects of it, though, just to do a quick recap, I would like you to remember to take caffeine out of your diet, take processed sugars out of your diet. Go as organic as you can. Do not be afraid to go strictly vegetarian or strictly carnivore or a, a, a combination of both. Pay attention. For those of you that are uh, have the awakening occurring, pay attention to what the kundalini wants you to eat. Sometimes it needs that compact protein in the meat, and sometimes it will direct you to just go straight into the vegetarian and fruitarian regime. So remember that. Stay hydrated with coconut water. And I have one here that I'm drinking right now. This is called Vita Coco. It's not from a concentrate. It's from the green uh, coconut. And uh, you can put it in the organic. And so I'll suggest that one to you. That's very good. you got to remember that 
that coconut water, coconut milk, as it's sometimes referred to, is a survival food. You can literally live off of the product of the coconut. So I want you to remember that as you're within your Kundalini awakening process to stay hydrated. Uh, this coconut uh, water it seems to be pretty well distributed around the world now. So do your best to get some, and, and if it's not too expensive, uh, partake of it daily. Uh, if you can get watermelon, partake of that daily in the morning, especially for those of you that are that are working through the first and second chakra uh, transformation periods. Uh, the watermelon can really save you from going into paranoia or fear or any of the the symptoms associated with excessive levels of adre- uh, adrenaline in your bloodstream, which is what the the uh, the body will put out. Um, the adrenal glands will put out uh, often in, in excessive qualities, or ex- I shouldn't say in excess, because this is what the Kundalini is designed to do: is to to hyperstimulate certain areas of the body. This is one of those areas that gets hyperstimulated, and so the watermelon is a great, great natural, organic process and, and combination of nutrients that will help keep you cool and help keep you collected calm, cool, and collected within, you know, this somewhat difficult area of the Kundalini Awakening uh, experience. So do remember to to get as much watermelon as you can. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's in season now, so feel free to partake of that. Uh, Feel free to partake of the coconut water. Stay hydrated regardless. Stay hydrated and really feel as you're walking down that grocery aisle or wherever you pick up your food, Feel what the Kundalini wants you to have. Sometimes she'll just want you to have fish. Sometimes she'll just want you to have some sort of a meat. Sometimes it'll say, strictly vegetarian, you won't be allowed to go near meat. Surrender to that process. Surrender to that inner guidance. It will not fail you. Uh, The other aspects of of your health, uh, and I'm going to go straight into the emotional health. Uh, The emotional health, uh, well, first of all, all the five bodies of Kundalini expression are, are connected to each other. Uh, the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body, the psychological or the ego body, and the spiritual body. They're all connected together, and many of these systems are going to respond at the same time or in different combinations during your experience. And, and let's be clear. Within the Kundalini awakening experience, this goes on for life. This doesn't stop. Yes, some of the the, the, the gross and and, uh, and and shall we say heavily tactile and and difficult areas will uh, subside. Definitely, it will subside. It's that's not an issue at all. What I'm saying is that the transformation in the awakened state from from a mundane human to divine human is a lifelong process. And the, the combinations that your five bodies will go through, either, you know, let's just use the example, your your physical and your mental systems may, may coincide with, you know, with a specific uh, experience, or your emotional and ego systems will coincide. And then you may get emotional, ego, physical. Then you get, may get physical, spiritual, emotional. I mean, there's many, many combinations, you know, with a series of five that can that the kundalini can bring. And so don't be surprised if you if you feel emotional and physical at the same time or, or any of the other combinations. Uh this is also a natural uh process that the kundalini will pick and choose. It will begin to play you like an instrument. You become that that kundalini guitar, that kundalini clarinet or saxophone or whatever instrument that that appeals to you. You become that instrument and the kundalini plays its music upon you and that music is what transforms you. So as we continue, uh, the emotional systems. This is very, 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 very important. Uh, You will receive levels of emotional expression that will cause you to just laugh and laugh and laugh and smile uh, and and you know, it won't be your normal, you know, ha, 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 smile. It will be this extremely serene level of 
smiling that you see on some of the pictures of the of the Indian gurus, you know, where they just got this beautiful smile on their face, this contented, this uh, this it's it's an ascended smile, a smile of grace, a smile of Kundalini, just flowing through you. You just love everything. Everything is just beautiful and and loving and. You can you feel the divine uh, expression coming through every level of creation. It is an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful experience, and I, I highly recommend it to everyone. Uh, and and for those who are having the Kundalini awakening, this is exactly what's what's coming your way. Uh, and for those of you who are inside of it right now, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, you can see garbage on the side of the road and go, oh my God, what beautiful artwork! Uh, you, you, <laughs> you could see any aspect of creation, and it's just a beautiful joy to experience. And conversely, you can also have uh, levels of, of tears and emotional heartbreak that, that are also pushing, pushing the limits of the spectrum of the human e- emotional body. So just as the love is is pushed to that extreme pole, so will some of the other emotional qualities be pushed into their extreme poles of expression. And I I want you to kind of not see this as a line, Uh, like say, you know, extreme love on one end and extreme, you know, uh, uh, sadness, say, on the other end. It's not like that at all. I would suggest you see it as a as a dot, a circle of energy, and it's ex- expanding. Uh, tendrils, tendrils are coming from the uh, from the dot, expanding itself into a, a multi-pronged star. And you'll see that the Kundalini is the driving force that is pushing, uh, pushing those experiences in, in, into widening the dot and then filling in the dot and creating a dot that's you know a million times larger than the previous one. Uh, so as the as the emotional system goes through its many 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 expressions and and uh, you can have emotional purges uh, emotional purges that will come from experiences that you've had in this life uh, or experiences that you've had in, in past lives that need to be purged now because of the level of, of Kundalini uh, energy that is that is coming into your into your five bodies of expression. So each of those five bodies have their own levels of karma attached to them. Karma being uh, uh, ideas and actions and thoughts uh, that are, are uh, uh, products of previous incarnations or products of this incarnation. This, an incarnation being a period of time as a, with a, as a soul in a body. And uh, yes, of course, this is relating to reincarnation, which, which I am a firm believer in. As, as it, the, the Kundalini basically says, this is the way it is. Whether you want to see it or not is up to your own choice. But this is the way it is. And so I am, I am extending that information to you about reincarnation. It is a real deal, and you are part of that real deal. So as the collective emotional expressions. Of, uh, of emotional karma come into this body that you're having right now and inside of a kundalini awakening, uh, you must surrender to let those emotions vent. They must be given the freedom to express. So go into a closet. If, you, if you're not in a situation where you can cry or, or sob or heave or do any of this stuff, where nobody can observe you, you know, and therefore nobody can become all upset or concerned for you. Oh, Chris, what's the matter? Why are you crying? You know, they they won't have an idea. That, oh, I need to cry. <laughs> this is a good thing. They won't they won't understand that because it's outside of their their paradigm of expression. So, as this occurs, and and as as you are able to do this in private, preferably. Uh, you know, go out to the car, you know, go to the car at night, go wherever you can go uh, where you can, can receive some peace and some quiet. I mean, if you're with a spouse, 
you know, take, uh, you know, that's a little more because spouse is always kind of like, whoa, why, are you, why did you leave the bed, honey? You know, that type of thing. Uh, if, you, if you feel that it's appropriate for you to tell your spouse about the kundalini and about these changes, then, you know, you'll, you'll have to do that. If you feel it's not appropriate, then just go to the bathroom and, and have the experiences there. Anyway, any way you can do it, have the emotional purging. Let the emotions purge, because if you don't, it's going to come out in areas that may not be appropriate in your waking or, in you, in, you know, in other parts of your life experience. So let the emotions come through. Do not try to control them unless you're in a public setting. Yes, if you're in a public setting, definitely control your emotions. Do not, you know, start shrieking in anger or sobbing in, in sadness or joy or love. You know, people will think that you're crazy and they'll they'll try to help you by, you know, having you incarcerated in a in a psych ward. Not not the best option in my opinion. Many people do go that route. Uh, let the emotions come forward. Just like uh any kind of an eruption on the physical body, whether it's acne or a, or a, or a boil, as some folks have experienced, uh, let it go. Get the toxins out of your body. You can have emotional toxins. As a matter of fact, here in the West, where we're, we're you know where many people are taught not to express their emotions, those emotions become infected. Those toxic emotions begin to infect the personality and the conscious experience of emotions by the person. You'll see these people walking around you with intense and permanent frown uh, lines on their face. You know, it's a permanent frown line. It's like, whoa, you know, has that person ever smiled in their life? You know, you'll look at that. You know that you know there's a lot of pent-up uh, you know, hurtful emotions that are that that person is holding in by virtue of sheer control. Well, with Kundalini, because the amplification the amplification comes so strong and so fast and so amazingly powerful, you're not allowed to hold it in. And the Kundalini, in many ways, will force you. It will force you to to release those emotional toxins. And I want you to just get out of your own way. Let those emotions come forward. Once they're purged, they're purged. It's not a forever thing. It may be, you know, for a few weeks, maybe, maybe. But, you know, the kundalini in you knows your situation. It knows what you're going through. It knows your family life, your work life, your friendship life. It knows you better than you know you. And so it knows the correct time for you to pull over and let that purge happen. Let that purge happen. So here I am. I'm driving across the country, and, and let's just say, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm driving along, and I'm inside this part of the Kundalini Awakening experience, and all of a sudden, just the sadness just overcomes me, or the joy just overcomes me to the point where, oh, my God, I'm going to have an accident if I don't pull over. Pull over. I'll pull over off that road, and I'll have that experience. I will let that experience come through me, flow through me. I will let that go. You know, don't even wait for a rest stop. I mean, if, if a rest stop's come up, fine, use the rest stop. If, if not, you know, the next exit, pull off the freeway, because in the States, you know, you can't just park on a freeway. Pull off as soon as the safest exit is for you to do so and have that experience. Cars are wonderful for this. I had one student, you know, because she couldn't talk to her husband. She couldn't talk to her family. She was having, you know, extreme kundalini experiences. And so she, she'd leave the bed. She'd get... She'd, she'd get into her car in a, in, a, in a frozen area of the United States, and she'd start driving around the car. Kundalini would tell her to pull over. She'd pull over, and she'd have her emotional experience. She would have her purge. She would have her purge. Okay? I'm going to strongly suggest that you let your emotional body feel free. You know, in certain, make the time in the day. Make the time at night to let the emotional body have its purging, whether it's of love or whether it's of sadness, or whether it's of hate or anger, any of those qualities that we've been, we've been conditioned to, to bury in our, in our day-to-day uh, uh, expression. 
let those expressions come through. You must let those expressions come through, or they will come through in the worst possible moments. Okay? You will not have the strength. And I know many people are saying, I, I'm, a, I'm emotional control. I can, I can control everything. I can control what I do and what I say and how I say it, to whom I say it to, and I never cry. I'm mucho macho. I never cry. I'm fully in control. Oh yeah. <laughs> those are those are the folks. Those are the folks that have a meltdown like a, 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 a Mount Vesuvius meltdown or a or a the volcano that, that destroyed Martinique, I mean <laughs> Mount Pele, volcano Pele. So yeah, those are the folks because they cannot. The human consciousness cannot withstand the release of Kundalini agenda upon the body. They just can't do it. It is not supposed to be able to be done. This is something that you're supposed to embrace and love and, and obey. <laughs> I don't know. I use that bad word, obey. But you, you need to really pay attention and to follow the instructions, shall we say, uh, of the Kundalini, because if you don't, you, it's going to blow through you somewhere, somehow, and typically not in an appropriate atmosphere or environment. But some of you, some of you are going to have to learn that way. The ego is so strong, it's like, wow, I'm 40 years old. I don't need no kundalini to tell me how to be. I can just be any way I want to be. The way I've done it always, it's the way it's always going to be, and boom, they're laid out on the floor in a fetal position, sobbing like a little baby. <laughs> Make your choice. You know, what do they say? You can uh, you can either do it the hard way or the easy way, but either way, it's going to be done. For those who have the awakening. Am I right, Amelia? <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> you know I'm laughing because... <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, I do. I, I I wrote on other groups that I'm actually sort of in the middle of something like that at the moment, or I was particularly about two weeks ago. It's got a bit easier since I since I began to really um, let it come um, more than I had been. I wasn't aware that I was resisting it as much as I was. You know, I was saying my mantra. I was going into the bathroom to cry and do things like that, but I was still suppressing it. I was still kind of controlling it on, on, on a level that I wasn't aware of because I didn't want to be seen. I was trying to manage so many things at the time, but I've created and um, I'm allowing myself to do that now, and it has made a big difference. I actually had some physical eruptions as well. Can I say something about that? Sure, that's the. Con I was just going to ask you, you know, what combinations of events uh -huh. did you experience? Well, you see, what? Okay, well, when it begins, when when it begun for me, I wasn't aware. I mean, you know, it began it began with me feeling emotional about things, and so it began gently enough, and then other things began to happen. Um, I started to have physical things going on. My ears started to hurt. And after a few days, I had a boil come into my ear, uh, a huge eruption. And um, it was excruciatingly painful. And at the same time, the you know, I really feel my psychological body, my ego, my, my thought process, everything was really expressing but I was seeing it as being in turmoil and so I was a bit all over the place and um, and so I I really wasn't allowing it to come and I wasn't I was trying to control it <laughs> and I think the physical eruption in my ear was part of that as well oh yeah yeah I, I, I wouldn't doubt that at all it happens in, in many ways, many combinations. It can also happen with the teeth. Uh, uh, you know, if, if you know, if a person is suppressing, suppressing uh, emotional qualities, uh, the teeth can form an abscess, 
or as you say, the inner ear can form an abscess. An abscess can form uh, inside of the nostrils, typically about an eighth of an inch inside the upper lip of the nostrils. And, you know, various ways that the kundalini will exert force upon the body. If you're not going to allow it to do certain things or you don't recognize uh, because you don't have the knowledge to, that, to let certain things happen, then the, the, the body will be co-opted by the kundalini, and the kundalini itself will begin to form an expressive release of the toxins from the body. As as, uh, as you said, Santara, uh, an inner ear boil is extremely painful. And I do not, uh, you know, my heart goes out to anybody that's having one. Um, one of the ways, that, and I need to go back into the physical now, so excuse me, I'm going to change channels from emotional to physical. Um, as the kundalini awakening or activation progresses within a person, the eustachian tube of the inner ear can begin to spiral. Uh, so when the, when the MD looks into your ear with the oscope, uh, you know, they'll, they'll have to kind of like dig it in there just to, to get around the, the, the turns of the spiral. Uh, it, you know, don't, I, I cannot tell you why except that Everything is of a spiral nature. Even our even our genes are spiraling, and so it's not a surprise to see that we are changing from you know in a physiological expression into a spiraling quality. Well, what can happen is if you take a shower or a bath or you go swimming, uh, water can get into that eustachian tube. It can collect on one of the spiral portions, and uh, and it can it can infect. So what I'm going to suggest you do is I'm going to suggest, you know, gently, 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 that you, you dip a cotton swab in some hydrogen peroxide after you take a shower, and you gently, uh, you know, massage that H2O2 or the hydrogen peroxide into the ear and let that, uh, let that take care of any potential uh, infection that may be developing for you. If you take a shower every day, uh, do that do that, and you'll, you'll probably not have to deal with an inner ear boil. But just remember, just remember that even if you do that and the Kundalini wants you to have that experience, you're going to have it. You're going to have it. Okay, so be be clear with that. There's nothing the MDs can do about an inner ear boil. When I had one, I had, I've had a few in my experiences, and the last one I had, you know, when they looked at you with the scope, you know they couldn't even get to your eardrum. They couldn't even see the eardrum because the 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 erupt the 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 swelling was so large. You know, and so you just you know you have to try to get some pain control. Talk with your kundal, and you look at what emotions you're suppressing. What are you not hearing about other people's emotions? What information are you denying yourself because your ego won't allow you to hear it? And it also is dependent on which side, which ear is having it, too. Is it the sacred left or the sacred right? And, and if it's, you know, if it's one or the other, well, what qualities of that sacred left or sacred right telling you that you're not hearing? Sacred left being the sacred feminine. Sacred right being the sacred male. Okay? These are all part of the fifth chakra. So what, what part of communication coming to you from Kundalini, coming to you from, from very important sources, say, within your life expression, are, you, are, are being blocked? And why are they being blocked? So you have plenty of questions to ask yourself. Uh, one of those questions is, you know, what is, your, what is your hygiene with regards to your ears? And so really, really look at that. Look at that. They won't be able to, they can lance it, but that doesn't mean that the infection won't continue. It'll typically take a number of days for this to calm down. They'll probably give you a, an antibiotic to, to, you know, to, to, to try to settle with it that way. And that can work sometimes. Uh, but if none of that is available to you, if you don't live in an area where there's a, an immediate doctor, you don't have the funding in the United States, you know, you don't, you know, like me. I have no doctor. I have no insurance. I have no income. And so for me, I am at the mercy of my kundalini. It takes care of me. And I pay attention. I pay attention to what it tells me. 
And I'm going to suggest that you do the same, whether or not you have an MD, whether or not you have a dentist. You pay attention and you be diligent in your in your hygiene and your maintenance. You know, uh, just to get a little further into it, you can get a rash with the Kundalini. You can get a heat rash, typically in the in the in the lower pelvic sorry. region. So, no, sorry, Quinton, sorry. I I also just, uh, you know, what you're saying there about the fifth chakra and all the things, it was my right ear um, connected to the divine male and all the things you said there with regard to listening and communications all fitted exactly, you know, with what has been going on for me. And my glands and my throat, my throat, I became, I got a rash in my neck all fifth chakra physical stuff began to happen as well, you know. Um, so I had a rash too and swollen glands and extremely hot in that area all around my throat and my ears and the fifth chakra. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you know. Oh, and also the boil, you know, what you're saying, what you're saying there as well about the kundalini paying attention to the kundalini and the kundalini looking after me as i began to realize um you know some things that were occurring and i had lanced the boil the day before but it had built up again and then the boil burst spontaneously as i began to go in and as i began to let the emotional and purging come the burst it burst spontaneously, and I know this sounds gross, but it, the gunk and stuff just kept coming out of it all day long. And I think that was connected to um, to just letting the purge happen emotionally, and I think the purge happened physically as well. Anyway, yeah, I think yes, they, they will reflect <laughs> each other. And I know this may be disgusting to some of the listeners, but, you know, I tell you what, uh, better to you hear, you to hear it now better to you to hear this now and have this information now than have to go through it yourself. Seriously. Inner ear uh, infections are very painful, as many of you know. Anybody that's have swimmers here, anything like that, you know what that's like. And so you really don't need to go there. With Kundalini, you have a heightened tactile response. And so you feel things very, very strong. That includes pain. You feel pain very, very strongly. And so so I appreciate you uh, uh, sharing uh, those details of your experience with us, uh, Santara. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome, indeed. So as we as we continue, you'll get you make you, you often you'll get a rash. You get raised bumps on the skin. It'll have a uh, it'll come to a head, and it'll be kind of like a a goldenish type of fluid inside it. It's a histamine response, really. And it has to do with the kundalini energy upon the body. Uh, the kundalini will do this at times. It's, it's, it's common, and yet it doesn't stay very long. Uh, it'll happen in the rectal areas. It'll happen uh, on either side of the, of the, the upper uh, uh, areas of the legs where the legs connect to the pelvis, you know, around the genital areas. It'll happen there. Uh, I want you to to not freak out about this, no need to go to a dermatologist. You know, sometimes it will happen on your face. It will happen on the neck. It will happen uh, in your underarms uh, and, for, and for the women under the breasts. It will happen there. And, and I just, I just want to underscore the fact that you need to keep these areas dry. Uh, go unclothed uh, whenever you can, only when it's safe and nobody can see you. You know, but 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 do try to be natural as natural as you can. Don't be afraid to to be in your own private space, uh, in your own private way, in your own private space. So this rash will come and, and it will go. It will itch. There, there there's some itching. You know, as I said, it's a histamine response. Typically, you know, your histamine responses will have some itch, itchiness to it. Uh, MD won't understand. MD will think, oh, you must be allergic to this or that, and they put you through this, through this whole allergy thing, when in fact it is the kundalini, and you're not allergic to anything. You're just having a response to the kundalini that is coming out as a heat rash or a rash. Okay? Don't scratch it if you can help it. 
just let it go. The, 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 the histamine reaction will stop. It will reverse itself. And the very next day, often, that, that, that rash is gone. So uh, once again, though, keep the areas clean and dry. You know, special in the private areas, keep them clean and dry. If you can, if, if there's a place where you can do a little sunbathing, get some light on there, too. You know, uh, 20 minutes one side, 20 minutes the other side. That's enough. That's enough. If you live in a highly uh, moist environment like, say, Florida, you know, where there's a lot of water in the air, you know, you just you just have to partake of, of some of the... Some of these things may be a little bit longer. But if you're inside, you know, well, then you, you can control the humidity inside your home to a degree, you know, if you have a humidifier or, or, or I mean, if you have an air conditioning unit or things of that nature. Uh, so know that. Know that the rash has come. It's not going to stay very long. I mean, at the max, it'll stay maybe three weeks, but uh, typically it stays just a few days and then it goes away. It may return. Nothing is wrong. Once again, it may return. Everybody's body is different when it comes to this type of a thing. And so just realize that this rash is associated with kundalini, and you do not need a medication. You do not need a topical ointment to try to get rid of it. Okay? This is part of the kundalini uh, uh, suite of symptoms that come to a person. So just know that. Now, sometimes I'll have people take a baking soda bath if they have this on their body. So you basically put a, a smaller, a medium box of baking soda in the bathtub on a, in a hot bath, run that hot bath, stay in it, you know, anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes, pat yourself dry, and what that will do is, is, is the salt, the salt will have a positive effect on the ration. You know, if you have a lot of, uh, of those uh, of uh, histamine, uh, uh, fluidic uh, places, you know, patches on your body, well, well, the salt will take care of those as well, okay? So moving onward, uh, I, I need to, I also need to get into your teeth. I know I didn't cover this last week, and I, I only had an hour, so, and, and here's the other thing. I'm going to, I'm going to go as in, in depth with this as I possibly can. I don't care if I have to do the next 10 shows on Kundalini and your health. I'm going to do it, okay, because this stuff needs to get out there. So your teeth, floss your teeth, massage your teeth. Your teeth are very, very important to this process. Uh, in the beginning of my process, you know, so long ago, I didn't know any of this stuff. And, and when, when my awakening experience it became so bad and so difficult for me to understand even what was occurring, you know, it put me out on the street. I became homeless wasn't able to take care of my teeth the way I really needed to at that time. I needed to go through the brutal experience of not being able to take care of the teeth because that turns into dental caries or cavities and certain infections and all of this stuff came to me because I was homeless and I wasn't able to have the dental care that I, that I should have had or not should, but I, I, I needed to have this so that I could tell you what to do, you know, 23 years later. So that was part of my experience. And so I'm telling you now, 24 years later, I'm telling you now that, yes, indeed, you need to continue. I don't care what circumstance you find yourself in. You get a, you know, you keep your teeth clean. Floss is not expensive. Use floss or use those little picky things, whatever you want to use. Keep your teeth clean. Keep your gums massaged. And what I mean by that is you can massage them with a piece of birch wood. Birch wood is good for this. People use birch with uh, dental work a lot. Uh, so massage it with birch wood or massage it with your fingers. Clean your hand. Clean it. And massage your uppers and your lowers inside and on the outside. Um, if an abscess is forming, forming, well, you'll know, you know, this... Uh, uh, you know, a, a sack of fluid will, will form uh, within your teeth. And I typically would not let that stay. I mean, I know a lot of people like to let it just burst on its own, and I'm not one of those people. I'll get a Kleenex in there. I'll squeeze it. I'll, I'll get that fluid out. It bugs the heck out of me. That's, that's me, though. I'll, I'll preempt the, the, the natural bursting process, and I'll, 
I'll clean that up myself. And I've done that on numerous occasions. It hasn't hurt me a bit. The body still responds naturally. Uh, so keep your teeth clean. Um, do your best not to have the lead-silver combination. I don't care what the dentists tell you. Uh, the mercury that they use within that composite will leach into your system. It will leach into your system. You know, a lot of the dentists use the, the silver mercury fillings, and, you know, they use them for years, and, you know, nobody wants to say, oh, gosh, you know, the thing that I've been doing for the past 20 years has caused so much anguish for people. You know, so a lot of that is them just protecting their practice. You know, and I just got to say, nobody blames them because the technology at the time was the technology at the time. They didn't know. So do uh, do as natural thing as as you can. I, you know, you know. Try to stay away from those if you can get a, a plastic composite or another type of a composite uh, for your dental work. Then do that. Do that. If you can't, don't worry about it. If you already have the silver mark in there, don't worry about it. Your Kundalini knows what's going on. If you can afford it. If you can afford it and the Kundalini arranges for you to have that removed, get them removed. Get them removed. Okay. Get them removed. Uh, with the eyes, I'm going to move up to the eyes now. The sunglasses have become a, a real style thing. You know, it's like, oh, look at those cool shades. Oh, I just want to wear those all day long. And they, they, they you know, they're... They're uh, a level of fashion that we just love to partake of. And one of the issues around eyeglasses, or, or, or not eyeglasses, but uh, uh, the, the whole shade thing, I'm rolling my window up because i got people sitting next to me, uh, is they block certain levels of frequency of light. And I'm going to suggest that you do not use sunglasses in every instance. I, I will suggest, unless you're looking at a lake or an ocean where they have, you know, the sun is refracting on the legs, on the, on the waves, and it's making it very difficult to see. Or the same thing when the sun is setting in traffic and, you know, you, when you're driving, you need to see and see clearly. Uh, I will suggest you use uh, uh, sunglasses with polarized lenses, okay, so that you can really eliminate a lot of the glare. Other times of the day, this is not something that is that is healthy for the eyes to hyper expand the pupil within bright light situations. No, I will suggest that you take the glasses off. Don't stare at the sun like some of the sun gazers like to do, and I'm not judging them. That's just what they like to do. Uh, I'm suggesting that you allow oblique levels of natural sunlight to be given into your eyes, and by oblique. I mean, like, you know, for instance, you're, you're sitting in traffic and, and somebody's chrome ref, reflects the sunlight and it comes into uh, your eye from an angle that is not in your direct vision. It's oblique. It's an oblique level. Let that, let that come in. Let those frequencies be given into the optic nerve, which flow right into the spinal column, which flow right in and mix in with your kundalini. Let natural sunlight come in to your, to your spinal column. Do not block this with sunglasses, okay? Especially the blue frequencies of light, okay? So that's what I'm getting for the eyes at the moment. Also, um, because you're crying so much, either with joy or with, uh, with a purging of sadness, uh, your your lacrimal glands will will be overly used uh, compared to how they're usually used. Uh, the lacrimal being being the tear ducts or your tear gland. Uh, you know, keep your eyes clean. Keep the areas around your eyes clean. Um, let those tears flow. Let them flow. Soak them up with a with a clean uh, napkin or Kleenex or cloth handkerchief. Let those things go. Uh, you know, you, those can be those ducks can become infected too. But typically, they're an out, they're an out uh, type of, of gland, and so 
uh, one way gland, and so you know you're not sucking up tears with the uh, lacrimal glands, and so they don't get uh, infected that much. But if they do, let them. You know, just don't try to. The skin is so elastic in that area that that it's very difficult to to uh, manipulate it, and so you like you can't. You know, you may have to get an antibiotic for that if it occurs. Uh, it's not that common. Um, styes and things of that nature, uh, uh, you can go ahead and have those looked at. Uh, moving into the nose. Inside the upper lip of each nostril, you can get an infection. Or it feels like an infection. Actually, it's, a, it's, a, it's an inflammation. It'll feel like a, a, you know, a, a large acne uh, Expression right under the upper lip, inside about one eighth of an inch, uh, this this thing will form, and it's painful. It's painful. Uh, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Uh, don't pick at it. Don't pick at it. Let it run its course. If it comes to a head, then gently take a Kleenex in there and and either you know train it that way or do what other people like to do and let it do that on its own. It's up to you. Uh, I'm personally a little more proactive in those areas. Uh, moving, oh, we talked about your ears. Women, grow your hair as long as you can. I think I may have discussed this last week, but grow your hair as long as you can. As long as you can and as fully as you can. Okay. Uh, for, the, for, the, for the females... Uh, it's, it's a very strong conduit of kundalini expression through the hair. Uh, for the men, you can also grow your hair as long as you can, but also don't be afraid to grow up here. There's a reason why so many of these holy men have so much hair. There's a reason. Uh, light, so look at it, it's like a fiber optic. Hair is a kundalini fiber optic. Kundalini travels up the hair uh, through the hair, the shaft of the hair from the follicle, through the shaft of the hair, and that line of kundalini radiates its own radiation through that hair. And so the hair is like, it's like a form of, oh gosh, what's, it's like a tube of radiance. It's like a tube of radiance. And so really, 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 look at the hair in a different way from beyond that stylish, fashionable thing. Okay. Now, yes, I understand, you know, the question, oh, well, the Buddhist monks do, they shave their head, you know, lots of people shave their head. That's fine. That's fine for them. Uh, and it's, you know, it's part of their belief system, and, and you know, they're not going to be shortchanged or anything like that. Uh, you know, people cover cover their heads with yarmulkas, I think they're called, them, or hats or scarves or, you know, turbans, all of these things. But I'm saying from a kundalini context, let the hair Go. That doesn't mean you don't brush it. Brush it, maintain it, clean it, condition it if you need to, but let it grow. Do not uh, become subservient to social programming about what is appropriate hair and what is now coarse. If you're working in the food industry, well, they're going to ask you to do other things with it. If you're working in the military, they're asking you to do certain things with it. And I understand that and go with that flow. But if you're not constrained, uh, to to do anything with your hair other than have it, well, then have it and have it well. Let it grow. Let it go. Let it be an, a, a conduit of radiance expression from your kundalini to the environment. Okay? Uh, uh, moving into the... Yikes. I didn't realize I was going to cover so much of the physical, but this is kundalini coming straight through. Moving into the genital areas. Uh, th there will be levels of severe arousal with the kundalini and a lot of self, uh, how, how do I typically put that? So, just a second here, I'm looking for a word. Um, so, self stimulation. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I, I like these to be G rated programs. So a lot of self-stimulation may come about due to the arousal caused by the kundalini in the genital area. Let yourself do that. Bring it to full expressive uh, 
events, orgasmic events. Let that happen. I know, I know, I know a lot of the religions are saying, oh, my God, if you, you're losing your life force or, or you're, you know, you're losing this or you're losing that. Oh, my gosh, you should, you should be celibate. You should be this way. You should be that way. Well, I'll tell you what way you need to be. You need to be the way the Kundalini wants you to be, not the way social programming within belief systems or structures of belief systems demand that you be. It is not a one-size-fits-all with Kundalini. Kundalini is coming at you from karmic areas, from areas of combinations of lifetimes and events and, and agendas that you have no clue about, and neither does the belief system that you may be following. So when the arousal gets to that point, well, you respond. You respond the way you're naturally given to respond. There will come a time when you will be given to not do that. Okay, you'll be given to not do that. And then I want you to surrender to that as well. You will not get to, to do that. But but for a certain period of time, about three weeks, month, month and a half, uh, during the early parts of the awakening, uh, you won't be able to not do that. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to be sucked into any of the jokes that come by. Uh, but I will <laughs> I will suggest that uh women keep yourself within within uh, uh the, the grasp of a parking meter. I call it the parking meter syndrome for the girls because you know, they'll walk six steps and they'll have another orgasm and have to lean against that parking meter and then they'll walk another six steps. Now look, if you're having these orgasms, these these, these ecstatic experiences during work, which which does occur, you may have to excuse yourself during that business meeting. You just go to the bathroom, have it, do whatever you need to do to, to maintain your hygiene, and then come back to the meeting. Uh, this is happening profusely, one after another, after another, after another. For the women, I'm going to say wear plastic underwear. For the men... Uh, you'll typically not have. You'll have more of, of a of a control over this. You'll be given more of a control uh, because the you know some of these. Well, it just it just seems to happen that the men, even though once they're out and about, uh, you know they'll be extremely. Oh, 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 for the for the men more so than the women, you need to stay away from the pornography. Stay away from the pornography. And that includes magazines, that includes movies, that includes certain types of uh, businesses. Uh, stay away from that. Do not engage in that. If you have to self-stimulate, fine, self-stimulate. Do not fantasize about pornography. Okay, there's a big difference there. Uh, same same with, the, with the women, for some of the women. Do not fantasize about pornography. This is not about pornography. People naturally tend to go there because that's where they experience release uh, of those of those. Uh, uh, pardon, someone's going to slam a door here. There we go. Okay, so that's where they experience the release of these 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 arousals. Do not go into pornography. This is not about pornography. Okay. Uh, moving onward, move. You need to move. I don't want you to have a stagnant energy response. I think I may have covered that last time, but just a quick recap. Don't let yourself become a couch potato. You get and you move, you dance, you run, you exercise, you work, you clean your house, you clean your teeth, you clean your body, you take your showers. Try not to use commercial soaps. Use natural soaps, goat milk soap or pine tar soap or soaps that are not you know, nothing like what you'll find commercially offered in the stores. Find as natural a source of soap as you can. Absolutely natural. Remember, this, these chemicals are going on your body, being sucked into your pores. Okay, so take care of the physical body this way. Keep the rectal areas really clean and really dry. And if, if you have the opportunity to use a bidet, B-I-D-E-T, a bidet, then use that bidet profusely. Do not be afraid to use that bidet. Use it. Use it. It's a blessing that, that, that you are able to do that. If you don't have a bidet, I want you to really, really clean the area well. After you do your initial cleanings, then I want you to, 
to get more tissue, and I want you to wet it down, put some soap on it, and really clean that area. You know what I mean. I'm not going to get any more details than that. <laughs> you know what I mean. Clean it. Don't turn the potty time into library time either. Uh, kundalini can expand uh, blood flow into certain areas, and so you know hemorrhoids can become an issue. So I don't want that to become an issue because you're sitting on it too long. So there's that. Uh, clean between your toes. I know this is all general stuff, but it needs to be said because not everybody does. Not everybody has the ability to. Uh, you know, it can be difficult. So clean between your toes. Clean your body, clean behind your knees, all of these areas. Clean them. If you don't need to shave your your legs or your armpits, don't. If you do need to, then continue. Then continue. You know, uh, I try for as much of a natural look, but I know in the states, you know, the women, you know, it, it, it's a, it's about shaving the underarms. I don't got a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it. Um, I'm moving through this here. It's, oh yes, mouth sores. Uh, you may have mouth sores uh, that come that are resembling herpes simplex one. Uh, these these are common. It's a very very common thing. Uh, the kundalini may put a level of stress on the body, anxiety stress, that, that will cause these blisters to appear inside your cheeks and under your lips and even in the corners of your mouth. They call it a cold sore. I don't want you to freak out over this. I do want you to keep your selenium, your zinc, and your vitamin C levels increased. Uh, a 1,000 milligrams of a vitamin C uh, complex, that complex containing uh, 500 milligrams of bioflavanols, 500 milligrams of hesperidin, 100 milligrams of, of uh, rose hips. Uh, see, I'm doing all this from memory. Uh, yeah, hesperidin, that's H-E-S-P-E-R-D-A-N, H-P-S-D-E-R-I-D-A-N, uh, uh, hesperidin, uh, bioflavanols. Those two are the most important. Then you can get rutin, if you can get R-U-T-I-N, if you can get uh, 100 milligrams or 500 milligrams of rutin in there, that's that's great. Take that daily in the morning with food, with the watermelon, hopefully, that you're eating. And then also... Uh, Along with that, if you're having a good breakfast, and I always suggest you have a good breakfast. Don't skip that because you're on your way to work or dropping the kids off at school. Have a good breakfast. And take, uh, you know, I would, for me, I was taking 100 milligrams of zinc and 200 mcgs, which are micrograms of selenium, with food. Okay. That was how I really, really kept a, a, a good, healthy uh, uh, level of experience with regards to the to the the mouth sores in the mouth. And don't let those freak you out. It's just because the body is responding to the stress that the kundalini can bring. And all you know, as as it goes through the systems, it'll stress out the the the, the muscular system, the skeletal system, the the endocrine system, uh, the the immune response will get stressed a bit too. It's not stressing it in the way that I'm that you may understand the word stress to me, it's, it's, it's expanding its potential. And by expanding the potential, the, those potentials need to be worked out to the furthest uh, uh, pole or spectrum of, a, of experience. Okay, and so you'll see these things happen. Don't freak out. It's natural. It will recede back to the normal thing. Also, get yourself a good uh, multi-mineral mix. Make sure you have levels of... Uh, magnesium in that. Okay, moving on. Um, I think I covered this last week with the thyroid, so look for those vertical ridges on your fingernails uh, and your brittle hair and, and the, the loss of hair at the outer ends, extremes of the eyebrows. Look at that. Uh, moving on. Okay, so I'm going to shift again now. So much, how much time do I have left in uh, Centauri? I don't have my little thing on here. Um, just, just 30 minutes. You have a half an hour left. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, I, I have you know. I'm going to have you know. I'm going to. I think I'm going to do another show on the health because there's a lot more to go. Uh, so, so, you know, uh, feel 
free also to, to email me at kfireforall, that's K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L, at yahoo.com, and give me suggestions on, on show titles that you'd like. Or you can email Centara at kundaliniMatters at gmail.com as well. Um, yeah, so continuing onward. Uh, often the, the physical symptoms will be uh, in conjunction with emotional symptoms too because it is known by the Kundalini that we are very, very emotionally repressed in this society in the West. Uh, it will create bridges of symptoms that correspond with an emotional blockage will become a physical blockage. And so you can often trace the physical blockage, as Amelia was suggesting, to the emotional blockage. And so this works very well as a diagnostic tool. Okay? Have a look at that. Um, there can be levels of extreme level, levels of rage and violent, violent thoughts, rage and angry thoughts. And I want you to just let those run its course. Do not make any decisions. Do not, and certainly don't make any activities based upon uh, these levels of expression. Experience them. Let them happen. And move through them. Do not let them dictate any kind of activity. Do not drink alcohol at all. I don't care if you're wine tasting. Don't drink any alcohol because this can this can allow entities to become the arbiters of how your rage or anger, which a lot of them are attracted to those expressions, uh, they become the controllers of how you are going to manifest that rage or manifest that anger. So be very careful not to have any alcoholic libations or methamphetamine or any of those, uh, you know, any, from psilocybin, any of those things. Uh, keep clear of those things while you're having your emotional, uh, your, your kundalini awakening emotional responses. Let yourself laugh. Let yourself cry. Let yourself enjoy beauty. Let yourself be angry. Let yourself uh, run the gamut of the emotional expression. Let yourself do this so that these emotions do not, uh, our bridge is not built into the physical expression. Uh, as as a way of pointing yourself to that to that to that location, I'm not sure that came out very clear. I hope so. Okay, moving on. Uh, mental, the mental body. You may become exceptionally brilliant, exceptionally wise, and brilliant, and a, a savant. You may, I mean, seriously smart. Seriously smart. Um, you will know things that you have no business knowing. You'll know things that you've never cracked a book about, that you've never seen on TV, that you, you've never Googled on, on, on the Internet. And yet you'll know them in intimate detail. You will know. Sorry about that ringing. People are sending me email. Anyway, so be okay with this. Not that you wouldn't be, but, but don't try to figure out, oh, my gosh, how do I know this? I've never read a book about this. I've never looked this up. I've never worked with this. It's the kundalini downloading that information into you. It is part of your future status quo. And it's it, your, 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 shall we say, in a computer language, your database is being upgraded. Your hard drive is being expanded. <laughs> so accept that with grace and gratitude. Accept that. And then I want you to accept this other side of the coin and the mental process as well. I want you to accept the fact that at times you'll be as dull as a as a well-worn sock whose mate has been lost. So it's that it's that solitary sock that got, you know, that got separated from its mate in the dryer or in the laundry somewhere. You'll be as dull as a sock. You'll be as dull as lint that comes from the sock. You won't be able to figure out which way is right, which way is left. I mean, you know, you'll be really stupid for a while. And it's not because anything is wrong. It's just that level, that pull of experience is being uh, uh, pushed to its maximum. Sometimes, in order to become really, really amazingly smart, we have to become amazingly challenged. <laughs> <laughs> 
in that area. <laughs> so don't be surprised. Nothing is wrong. It's a normal thing. Um, often in the West, we try to figure things out. The more things we figure out, the more successful we are in our life here in the West. Uh, with the Kundalini, I'm going to ask you to turn your figuring it out mechanism off. Don't try to figure out the Kundalini. It will preoccupy you to the point of where you're really missing some of the, the really important levels of experience that the Kundalini is bringing you to. So turn it off. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to know why it's doing this or what is this or how is that or how can that be? Oh, my God. You know, there's a lot of OMG moments. Don't try to figure it out. You can ask the Kundalini, and if it wants to tell you, it will. You can ask your teacher, and if they feel that you need to know, then they'll tell you. But don't get into this figuring out mode. It's just it's it's spinning your wheels for no reason. Okay, steer clear of that if you can. Uh, you may find yourself becoming a little OCD. This is normal as well. Obsessive compulsive disorder is what OCD stands for. You may become obsessively compulsive with certain things. For me, it was making sure pictures were straight on my wall. <laughs> oh, my God, that picture is slightly off, a millimeter. Ha, I, must, I must correct this. <laughs> for other people, it's making sure the silverware is straight. <laughs> It'll come out in, in various ways. Uh, and basically what it is is it's, it's communicating to you a level of balance, a level of a balance. You know, the picture for me couldn't be tilted one way or the other. It had to be an absolute balance. This was my response, my physiological, emotional response to my inner self being in balance, me being in balance with myself, me being in balance with my kundalini. And this may come out in you as well. Don't be surprised. You don't need to take a medication for this. And your parents and your friends or your family or your MD or your counselor is like, well, you know, uh, Chris, we have a medication for that. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you do. Um, you don't need a medication for any of that. You don't need a medication for any of the Kundalini responses at all. As a matter of fact, I'll suggest you steer clear of all of them. No, I am not an MD, and no, I'm not giving out medical information here. But until the medical authorities understand Kundalini beyond a spiritual emergency, <laughs> they're way they're way behind in how it is we treat uh, for Kundalini, and we don't typically chemically treat for Kundalini. Okay, an FYI. Uh, moving into further into the uh, into the mental body, you'll receive information as I mentioned before. You'll receive information. You may receive levels of communication. Uh, in the mental body, I'm also placing levels of sight, second sight, or the the sight that you acquire through the opening of the sixth chakra, commonly referred to as the third eye. Uh, you may see faces floating by you. It's perfectly okay. You don't need to acknowledge any of them. It's just that you're seeing them because you're able now to see them. Don't try to figure out, oh, my gosh, I'm seeing faces. So I've I, I got to figure this out. Don't try to figure it out. Just relax with that. Let it come. Let it be as it is. When you close your eyes, you may see that light, that lit up pineal gland. Uh, let it be. Let it be. And you know now that it's a lit up pineal gland. Don't don't be addicted to seeing it and don't be, you know, sorry if you stop seeing it. Learn what it is to receive in a different way. Learn what it is to learn and educate yourself in a different way. The mental mind is changing. It's exploring the extremes, the absolute dullness and the absolute you know, brilliance, it's, it's, it'll explore those those areas and let that occur. 
But everywhere in between, you know, there are little pitfalls that our ego likes to, to put us into. And one of them is figuring everything out. And the other one is, is holding our, our, our brilliance as, as a way of, of competing with other people. And I'm going to tell you not to do that as well. Just as you wouldn't compare how dumb you're getting or stupid or in ignorant you're getting with the Kundalini. It's like, wow, I'm more ignorant than that guy. <laughs> You know, just the same as you wouldn't do that. Well, you wouldn't go, well, I'm more smarter than that person. You wouldn't do that either. This is one of the ways that we begin to initiate controls over the competitive natures that our ego will push into us. Which, uh, let's see, uh, let's see how much time I got left here. I feel like I'm talking a mile a minute. Ah, 20 minutes, okay. Um, which brings us to the ego, the self that part of you that is listening to this radio show right now, is like, it wants to feel enjoyment. It wants to feel powerful. It wants to, to be accepted in the community. It wants to do all these things. And it wants that candy, apple, marmalade, ice cream. <laughs> I think. I'm not sure I want that, but yeah. Uh, it, it, it wants those things. It wants that pretty blue dress or that, uh, that fine-looking Harley Davidson that the Americans love so much, uh, or that fast car, or that, you know, those beautiful shoes, or, you know, whatever it is. It wants these things, and I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to suggest to you, don't give in to these things. Have what you need and need what you have. That's all you need to do. Okay? You don't need to buy into excessive fears of loss or want of gain. You don't need to, to buy into this the rat race of constantly accumulating physical things. You know, I'm, I'm moving a student out here to to Florida, and she, and she had to she had to throw away all these things, and it's inside of her Kundalini. And sure, she went through a period of like, oh my gosh, you know, do I need to get rid of it? But she's over it now, and you too. Once you start down down uh, sizing, you too will get over this. You too will get over this. So I'm going to suggest that you really begin to train your ego into not being so uh, acquisition oriented, not be so competitive with your fellow person, because within a Kundalini context, they cannot compete. So it's like you know, it's it, you, you can't compete with them, and they can't compete with you. It's not fair. So really begin to train your ego not to have a, uh, a, a, an inner dialogue of competition. Oh, my gosh, that guy tried to pass me, and he's in a Mazda? I'm going to let a Mazda pass me in my Corvette? Oh, my God, I can't let that happen. So you, you just need to... <laughs> you, not, nothing, nothing, nothing against Mazdas or Corv Corvettes. Uh, uh, but, yeah, yeah, you need to really kind of begin to rewire that self-dialogue, that inner dialogue that you have uh, that's based around competition and also around fear, fear of loss, want of gain, and, and also fear of the strangeness of life. Kundalini can really make your life strange. Telekinesis is, you know, sounds great. Oh, God, I'd love to be able to move that orange, you know, uh, you know without touching it. Well, it scares the living daylights out of people, and they'll just want to stay away from you. They'll think you're some sort of a demon if they have that, you know, belief system inside of You don't want to show this stuff to other people or telepathy or clairvoyance unless you're there to help people. So, for instance, I, I respond to, to accidents that I see on the road. I'll stop and I'll try to give aid to people. And if a car is turned over and they're seeing, you know, you, you know, people are stuck inside because it turned over and if it can be safely righted, and I'll call other people over, and it will seem as if we're all doing it together. Well, that's the way to go. Make it a community effort, even though you're probably, your kundalini is going to do most of the work. That's okay, because they get to have the, gra that, the gratifying feeling of having helped another person. And so not only are you helping the people in the car, you're helping the people helping the people in the car. It's a win-win-win. And this is how I will suggest you use any of the divine attributes that the Kundalini brings. 
out and see how I'm doing here. Uh, okay, I'm going to open it up for questions. Uh, to call in, uh, you would call 347-934-0026. That's 347-934-0026. And uh, for those of you that are on the chat, which I haven't been able to view because I'm on my iPad for whatever reason, it's not loading it up, I'd like to say hello to all of you that are on the chat group right now that are listening to this show live. Um, the number, once again, is 347-934-0026. Santara uh, will, will catch your phone call, and, and she'll let me know that so-and-so has a question. Is there anybody with a question right now? looks like you've got a question mark on there, uh, Santara. Hello? Oh, you guys must be talking. Okay, all right then. Ah, here we go. What's going on, Santara? Hi, that was somebody um, ringing to know, would you say something about the upcoming Shakti Pass? Ah, okay, sure, sure. I give Shakti Pass during the solstice and the equinox throughout the year. I've only missed it one time, which was last time, because I just needed a break. Um, so I've been doing it for a long time. They're fairly effective. Uh, if you're practicing the safeties, and uh, these are the practices that you can go to Kundalini Awakening Systems com, go down the, the left-hand margin, you'll see the safeties, and then uh, I, I encourage you and I invite you to copy those down on a hard copy or read them assiduously and memorize what they mean and practice them every day. I will give you a Shakti Pot based upon the practice of those qualities. I will not give you a Shakti Pot outside of your practice of those qualities, certainly not at the solstice and the equinox, which are very powerful points uh, within the year. Um, I give these Shakti Pots via a scatter field. A scatter field is a cellular consciousness that is given by the kundalini to the individual five feet above their left shoulder, and this creates a conduit of interaction between the kundalini and me and the uh, the, the, the physical person and their kundalini and the activation rate within that physical individual. And so because I'd given Shakti Pod before the safety, before I had the safeties, and it was so strong that people could, literally end up in the psych ward, and I just did not want to do that. Uh, that happened once, and I, I don't want that to happen anymore. So the scatter fields are used, and the safety protocols are used so that people can have this within the level of practice that they're uh, they're able to to ascend to, you know, practices of forgiveness and tolerance and patience and trust and surrender and love, practices of, uh, of uh, the the locks, the, the tongue lock, the finger lock, the chin lock, the, uh, you know, the mahabanda, you know, which is a combination of locks. The practices of the five Tibetans spinning to the right. I know some people say spin to the left, but the way we're doing them here is we spin to the right uh, 21 times for each Tibetan. And then also, you know, levels of understanding of, of what it is to meditate and how to meditate different mantras to say while you're meditating and all of these can can be seen and and you can you can actually see some videos on this if you go to youtube and you go to chrisum uh kundalini you know just go chrisum kundalini and one of my 250 videos will pop up and you know you'll be able to uh, go to the channel which is chrisum and then zero kundalini which it looks like chrisum o kundalini and you can uh, you can cherry pick any of the videos that you want to see, and, and if, if they're uh, pertaining to the Shakti Pot, which a few of them are, well then the Shakti Pot will be explained in greater detail in those videos. Um, uh, so yeah, so the, the the upcoming Shakti Pot is for the summer solstice, and I have about oh gosh sixty some odd people that are participating in that. It is too late to sign up for that, but the autumnal uh, Equinox. It's not too late to sign up. And uh, and uh, uh, Centaur, if you can go ahead and put an album up for the for the Autumn Equinox Shakti Pot, I'm sure you know how to do that. If not, let me know and, I, and I'll set it up. 
And uh, we can begin sign-ups for the autumnal equinox Shaktipat, Shaktipat of 2013. And you need to put a picture into that. This is on the Yahoo group or the Facebook group. Uh, there's a Facebook group that is called Chrisum Kundalini Shaktipat. So if you're on Facebook, you can partake of that. If you're not and you're on Yahoo, then go to the Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com or, or actually Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups. Dot com. Looks like I'm down to ten minutes. Okay, yes. So, so you can go there and you can begin to to initiate your uh, connection with your Kundalini. It's not the requirement. Um, you can do it any other anyway. I mean, you can go get Shakti Pop from somebody else, and, and I'll do my best to help you with it. Uh, but if you're, I, I would really recommend that you not use entities for Shakti Pops. Do not use discarnate entities, ghosts, spirits, elves, ascended masters of this ray or that ray, archangels, normal angels. Uh, do not use them for kundalini acquisition and, and experience. Uh, use use your own self. Uh, do I have a question there, Santara? Looks like I might have somebody waiting. I haven't. Do you want to just? I'll check that for you now. One moment. Thank you. Thank you for your help with that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave the last nine minutes, eight minutes now, for anybody who might want to call in and ask a specific question about your Kundalini awakening experience. Uh, the experiences will vary. Once again, uh, your karma is unique to you. The next show, I'll be just. I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick. Reminder of some of the stuff that we covered today, some of the major points. Uh, but then I'm going to go into to, uh, levels of pain, pain management, confusion management, suicide. Uh, these all, especially suicide, will have a direct effect on your health. Uh, yes, I hear somebody uh, here. Oh, it's Fash, it's Fash G, and he has a question for you, so you can speak to him there. Now. Hello, Fash G. Hello, Master C. How are you? <laughs> How may I help you, my friend? Well, I'll tell you. I, I have a, a, a couple of questions. Uh, one is, I have been finding that uh, as my practice is progressing, I'm unable to wear certain uh, uh, jewelry. Uh, such as uh, yeah. a pendant uh, made of uh, a fairly energetic mineral or um, uh, anything of that sort. I, I find that it causes um, sort of um, a disturbance in my field. And I was hoping that you might um, speak to that uh, regarding how uh, Kundalini will change the, the, the structure of your, your uh, auric field, such that those things are a hindrance instead of a help. Very good, very good question. Thank you, my friend, for ans answering it. Yes, I will, of course, speak to that in the eight, seven minutes I have. Uh, certain certain metals, uh, it's circling metals like rings or pen or, or watches or or bracelets or things like that will be discouraged by the kundalini because some of the metals will, will have the, the effect of diverting flow or, or in some way emitting a, a boxing in, into the into the uh, jewelry uh, or into the skin from the jewelry. And all of them have some, some vainglorious qualities, not certainly speaking to you, Bashti, but to other people they have kind of a vainglorious meaning, uh, big bright baubles, things of that nature. Uh, the kundalini wants you to begin to recognize that you are a jewel. You are an adorned jewel of divine, sacred godliness. And God does not need jewelry to to exemplify herself or himself. So uh, certain imbued qualities of jewelry, so, so for instance, people will give me jewelry to shaktivate or to shaktipat, give a shaktipat to jewelry. That's different. That's different in the fact that it's a kundalini-oriented gift. It is not a, a gift that has any other expression or meaning attached to it. So 
uh, as I give, I'll, I'll, you know, various uh, private students I have, I'll give a shakti pot to, to one or two things that they may want to wear. And because it is of a kundalini origin, all of a sudden, that metal has changed. That glass has changed. That jewel has changed. That mineral has changed. It's changed on a molecular basis into a kundalini conduit. And those those things can be worn, and they'll be worn without without a without a problem or without any kind of a of an intuition to not wear it. But without that type of a of a of a, of a molecular change, uh, the kundalini will often say, "No, no, no! Don't wear that! Don't wear anything! Don't wear anything!" Uh, uh, Apologies, I'm in I'm at a Tenny's parking lot right now in the Mojave Desert. So you may... <laughs> I, I, I have got one other question here while I'm on, and I'm, then I'm going to get off. I I have um, the strangest growth that seems to have appeared overnight on my left leg. And, Where on the left uh, leg? Where on? On my calf. My lower okay. calf, right, 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 like? right above the ankle, and um, it has it, 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 it exemplified all a lot of the uh, the things that you were talking about, specifically the um, um, oh, the release of. Um, uh, okay, all right, I got you, I got you. I want you to go ahead and encourage that release. This is blocking one of the. Uh, is it on your left calf, right? Yes. Left? Yeah. Yes. This this has to do with with uh, one of the channels that are coming up uh, from the left big toe. One of the Kundalini channels that are coming up. There's a feminine aspect of yourself that is being blocked. A fem- feminine receptive aspect, and so I want you to go ahead and, and drain the fluid if you feel comfortable doing that. Oh, it doesn't have any fluid, Master C. It's just just okay. sort All of right. dry and crusty. And the, the, the hist, uh, histamine uh, 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 expression is happening as well around it. Did you, did you get bit it. by a, by an insect? Did you get bit by a spider? No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, it, it's quite does it possible. Look like a but target? Does, does, it, does it look like a target? Does it have uh, like a, a central area and then an expanding ring around it? Yes, it does appear to be that way. That's at, a at first, it, at first it, it just sort of... Looked like a, a, a like a saw, like a, a, a large scab, and then as I applied some uh, essential oils to it, it started to to lower and lower and lower. So I don't I don't yeah. quite know if that's uh, if it's a bite. It is possible since we live in Michigan. Yeah, yeah. If it continues yeah. to get, do you know what necrosis is? Do you know what that is? No. That's the, if the tissue begins to die, I want you to go to an MD as soon as you can. Okay. Okay. And, um, I want you to go to an ER and let them know that this has been, when it happened, how long it's been going on, and uh, if it's, if it's you know, that the, the, the tissue is turning black and green and things like that, okay? No, no. It's not doing that at all. It's just the, 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 the side of it is just... Around it is some redness, but um, it, it's not um, it's not intense. I mean, it's not growing. I've had it for about uh, at least two months. So um, I, I suspect it might have been. I beg your pardon. Keep an eye on it, my friend. I'm gonna I'm gonna get disconnected pretty quick here. Yeah, I'm um, gonna get down to a minute so forty one. Oh, my friend, it's good to hear you. Very good to oh, hear you. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. Looking forward to Laura, the doctor. Gonna... Lauren, can you come online? Hello, Lauren. Hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing very well. How are you? Good. Oh. Ask me a question quick. They're going to cut me off. Ah, okay. I was just introduced to this, so I'm not going to tell you, ask you to tell me anything about it, but what should be my first step in getting into this? Oh, well, well I, I'm going to suggest you go straight to the safeties. The safeties themselves, Lauren, are an activation platform, and they do it in the safest way possible. But I want you to be I've ready. I've already opened to... my third eye and everything, if that's what you mean. 
No, 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 no. I'm talking about okay. Kundalini. I will shut up and yeah. let you talk then. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, go to the safety protocols and begin a daily practice of those safety protocols. They will begin a refinement process within you that will really coalesce in a in a in a an awakening of the Kundalini within you. Uh, and feel free to, to to email me privately at kfireforall at yahoo dot com, and I'll go into more detail for you personally, Lauren. Uh, they're going to cut me off. You are at 10, amazing. 9, Thank, 8. You. <laughs> Thank you, and, Lauren. And just tell me Thank your email you, address. Why? Or type it in the, the chat, and I'll email you right now. Kfireforall at yahoo dot com. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> I'm typing. I